Hello, this is G0FUW. Um, this video is part of a distance learning course for the UK Advanced Licence Exam. Uh, short video, two main learning objectives. Firstly, to look at the basic functions of the oscilloscope to help better understand how it works. And secondly, uh, to use the oscilloscope to look at how rectifier diodes and the other key parts of mains power supplies uh, operate and how they're used. This is a fairly simple oscilloscope so it's quite good to illustrate uh, to beginners and people who are not familiar with them and the key features on this oscilloscope are much the same on any other scope. First of all uh, the main part of this oscilloscope in here is a cathode ray tube and uh, that puts a stream of electrons from the back to the front which are displayed on this screen here and as you can see there's a small dot where the electrons hit the front of the screen we can move that up and down and we can move it from side to side but we'll start off with it nice and central the side to side movement is known as the X axis and if you remember it's a very non-technical way of remembering but X is across and the X axis moves the spot across the screen. The, the up and down movement is the Y axis. Uh, so X across and Y up and down. The other main part of the scope which you'd be interested in is the, the probe. Um, it's a bit like the test leads on an oscilloscope where you have uh, the business end, which I guess is the, like the red lead, the positive lead on the, uh, the test meter and the crocodile clip normally to put onto the negative side or to the earth uh, and most probes have a switch where you can click between times 1 or times 10. The beauty of the times 10 is it uh, makes the scope less reactive and uh, allows you to measure higher voltages so um, we'll show that in a minute but uh, basically if it's on the times 10 anything that's displayed on the screen uh, is actually 10 times greater. Okay let's do some quick measurements. Um, the, the screen on here you'll see is divided into uh, a grid or a graticule and each one of these main lines is one centimetre apart. So we can set the Y amplifier to read anything from sort of millivolts up to, to volts and uh, in this case it's set to 2 volts per division so um, each centimetre is 2 volts and I'll put this onto the 1, uh, the one volt um, setting which probably makes complete things. We'll click the negative lead onto the negative part of the battery and we'll touch on the other side. You can see there the thing jumps right up. If we put onto times 10 to illustrate that actually reduces it, it now moves up about half a centimetre and uh, showing that if uh, the that's complete pig zero of it, if we make that one, that would be 10 volts per division and the 9 volt battery nearly makes it to that. So it's a nicely fully charged battery. Um, if we reverse the leads, you'll see that the a negative signal sends the spot downwards. So we can go up or down depending on the polarity of the signal. Okay, what we're going to do now is we're going to put this component into circuit. Um, hopefully you can see this is a, a standard transformer, it's a mains transformer it has two wires for the input, two wires for the output and uh, it's a step down transformer so the two 30 volts going in will be about I think it's uh, about 30 volts coming out there or thereabouts. Um, for safety's sake I'm not going to wire this one up, I've actually got it inside this plastic container with a switch on the side. I'm going to switch them on now and you can see on the oscilloscope we appear to have a positive and a negative reading at the same time. 
that doesn't seem to be possible because um, how can it be positive and negative at the same time? Well, it can't, obviously. Um, what's happening is that the, the spot is moving backwards and forwards uh, 50 times a second, 50 hertz, reflecting the mains voltage that's being input to the transformer. Um, if we start to move the spot across the screen using the time-based control, um, we still can't really see anything much different though, it's just moving the, the positive and negative across the screen. So if we speed him up, eventually we start to see a pattern emerging. You can just start to see it there, we speed up a bit further and eventually we get the classic um, sine wave picture on the screen. And uh, if we do this uh, as we can with the oscilloscope you can see that from that point there to that point there it's a full wave from down negative up to zero positive and back to zero uh, is two centimeters across and two centimeters at the time base setting at 10 milliseconds per division means that the the full wave is taking 20 milliseconds and if you use the formula from the sheet that's um, 1 over T uh, the frequency comes out at 50 Hertz uh, so this is one way you can use an oscilloscope to measure frequency if you can use the time base to get the reading from a full wave uh, you can then use the formula to work out exactly what the frequency is in this case 50 Hertz okay so we've uh, we've got the the classic uh, waveform on the screen the time base is sweeping fast enough to freeze the action we could slow it down or speed up the dot even further to stretch out the wave and um, again we could uh, measure there for a full wave this time covers four centimeters at five milliseconds gives us the same figure of 20 milliseconds per cycle okay we'll pop it back to that setting because we can see a number of peaks and troughs quite nicely and um, not much else to say there um, other than the uh, the amplitude was set to 2 volts per division times 10 so that's 20 volts per division so you can see we've got 20 volts and about half again so it's about 30 volts peak uh, 60 volts peak to peak and uh, if you like you can do the maths and work out what that is as an RMS uh, figure um, but certainly 30 volts is ample for what we want to do and uh, we're going to now add some rectifier diodes to see if we can turn that into a useful power supply the first circuit we're going to show is this one um, it's identical to the circuit that's on page 35 of the advanced textbook figure uh, 6.7 if you want to check it out um, it's got a single diode and a load resistor just to, to give something to uh, to measure the uh, the waveform against uh, and two uh, leads which we're going to put into the, the power supply right now. Um, obviously it doesn't matter which way we're going to put the AC because that's either way but we will connect the make sure we connect the scope probe the right way around so negative to that side and positive to the the, the diode and now when we switch on we can see the classic half wave rectification form on the screen um, the diode is conducting on the positive half cycle but on the negative half cycle the diode doesn't let the the current through but then when it goes positive again the diode switches back on and, and, and away it goes and um, still got the 30 volts peak but no longer have we got the negative side so the uh, the diode is doing its job and uh, as you can see there's some considerable gaps between the peaks but you've got pulses of positive um, signals coming through there and uh, that's the, the basic half wave rectifier okay this time we're using a bridge rectifier um, which has got four diodes in a kind of diamond shape around the outside. The AC is going to be applied to the opposite corners and we've got a load resistor across the other two corners and again this is exactly the same as in the advanced textbook on page 36 this time 
and it's figure 6.11 and uh, very useful to to memorize the circuit because it does crop up from time to time in the exam and is very useful in real life so we'll pop them into the, the power supply again we'll apply the um, the probe across the, uh, the circuit you can see that it's picking up probably some mains home or something on there and uh, this time when we switch on we can see the classic full wave rectification signal um, again nothing on the negative side but instead of having gaps between the pulses uh, the negative cycle has actually been flipped around by the bridge action so we get twice as many positive peaks and uh, it's not a perfect sine wave but you could see that as being actually a doubling of frequency um, so uh, if there were ever any questions about the signal coming from a, a bridge rectifier uh, it's actually a, a hundred hertz rather than fifty hertz uh, in effect because it's it's turned the negative peaks into positive peaks and uh, again we've still got the 30 volts peak no, no change there uh, obviously far more efficient this than the half wave rectifier because we're not losing the half the negative half of the signal we're, we're, we're seeing both sides rectified quite nicely <laughs>